All right. Uh, welcome to an introduction to Lego Technic. And if you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, Technic is one of the many different themes that the Lego company produces. And it's a little bit different from all the other Lego themes in that it's got a really different look to it. It's got a very unfinished, very mechanical sort of look. And if we pull out some old instructions from uh, my shelf here, you'll see that Technic sets are full of little holes and pins and gears and all kinds of things that move around and give all of these sets a really unfinished sort of look, unlike your traditional Lego sets that tend to be a lot smoother. So let's get rid of these and let's dive right in. So in Lego Technic, just like regular Lego, we have mostly bricks and plates, but in Lego Technic, all of our bricks have holes in the side for connecting pins and axles. But other than that, they're basically regular Lego bricks. Now, you'll notice right away that the one has a single hole, a two has one hole, a four, a one by four has three holes, the one by six has five holes, and the one by eight has seven holes. So for the most part, there's an odd number of holes and they're centered between two studs. And then of course there's a couple of exceptions like the one by one and this one by two with two holes and of course the one by two with an axle hole instead of a pin hole. Moving on to the plates you'll see that this looks just like a Lego plate but it's got holes in it so you can run an axle through it or attach pins and then when you get to a plate modified we might see a plate with pins sticking out of it or a plate modified with a pin hole or axle connector on the side. So moving right along, we now have beams and half beams. So these are very common in modern Technic sets and they're really similar to a traditional Lego brick in their geometry, except there's no studs on the top and there's no stud holes on the bottom. But the pin holes line up and a half beam while it doesn't have any stud holes, can connect to the top of the studs on a regular brick. Combining two regular bricks, studs facing each other, you get a very unusual stud-to-stud -stud connection using a beam on its side. But for the most part, that isn't really how you end up using the beams. So these are all beams, and then the beams also come in sort of modified forms with some angles and then sometimes you'll see an axle connector on a beam and for the most part they're odd numbers three five seven and so on because they're based on the geometry of the brick which also has for the most part odd numbers of holes on the sides of the bricks let's move on to half beams so a half beam is just like a regular beam but it's half the width so that makes it a little bit unusual in the Lego universe because it's not the same width as a plate. There is nothing else in the Lego universe that is the same width as a half beam. But a half beam is, as the name suggests, exactly half of a beam. And then of course half beams also come in a few different configurations and shapes like L's and corners. And then we'll move along to the axle. So the axle is kind of the next basic building block in the world of Lego Technic. Axles can be used to uh, connect wheels, to move motion from one point to another point, and you can even use them to connect models together, to hold things together. For the most part, in the world of Technic axles, even numbers are made in black and odd numbers are made in grey. But of course there's a whole bunch of exceptions. And then there's also modified axles. So axles with pins on the end, axles with stoppers, and different configurations for different usages. And then moving along to our next category, we have pins. So there's a lot of different types of pins in Lego Technic, but they basically fall into two different categories. There's pins with friction and pins without friction. And if I grab a couple of the beams over here, I'm just going to connect two beams together with a pin with no friction. And you'll see that that's totally loose. It's flopping around freely. So a pin with no friction might be really useful to connect a wheel onto the side of a vehicle or to make a free-floating arm that spins or a rotor on the front of uh, 
a plane or the top of a helicopter. And then if I just switch this out for the pin with friction, you'll see a totally different result. There is no natural floppy movement. I can manipulate the pin with my finger, but it then just basically stays in any position that I've placed it. Other than the difference between friction pins and uh, loose pins or pins without friction, there's a bunch of different configurations. There's a pin that translates to an axle, a pin that translates with a too long axle, there's a too long pin with an axle hole or axle connector on the end, um, and then there's a ton of other variations that I don't have here right now, but you get the idea. So those are your pins in the world of LEGO Technic. So now, we get two connectors. So just like the pins, there are tons of different configurations of connectors. And I'll just talk really quickly about this basic sort of set of connectors here. It might be a little bit hard to see, but there are numbers stamped onto the bottom. This is number one, a number two connector, a number three, four, five, and six. And the numbers don't really matter, but they do make it a little bit easier to talk about the angles. And of course, if you're trying to order some of these online, it's great to have the number so that you can get the part and the angle that you want. Other than the basic uh, type one through six, you've got lots of different versions of connectors. There's connectors with two pinholes and an axle hole on the side, two pinholes and an axle hole going in the other direction, sort of a corner beam, a uh, really big, gigantic, unusual connector that must have been for something very specific. Um, and then you've got a couple of really basic connectors. So over here, I've got an axle joiner or axle connector. And you can use this to join two axles together to create a length that might not exist, like a 10 and a 9 together to make a 19 long axle. Um, and then you've got your pin connector, which we could use to connect two pins together, which might be practical for any number of reasons. And I've chosen two pins um, that are in obvious different colors, so you can see where the two pins come together in the middle of the pin joiner. And once they've clicked nicely in, because neither pin has friction, this whole thing is going to spin freely. All right, moving on to our last category. We have gears, the driving mechanism of all LEGO Technic sets. And if it doesn't have gears, it's probably not a LEGO Technic set. So, um, gears come in a variety of different shapes and sizes and even a few different types that don't connect necessarily with others of uh, different types. But your basic gear family in Technic are right here along the bottom. You've got an 8 tooth, 16 tooth, 24 tooth, and 48 tooth. And these are all totally compatible with each other. They mesh perfectly and roll into each other. I also have a crown gear here which is used for changing the direction or the axis of rotation. So here I can mesh my crown gear with a regular 48 tooth gear and an axle on one plane could translate movement to an axle on a different plane. We also have a worm gear and a rack gear and then I've got this weird little nubbin gear and a few recent sets have come out with these giant sort of fun cartoony gears uh, and they're totally incompatible with all the other versions of gears but they do mesh perfectly with each other and that's uh, our quick look at the different types of parts and so now i've got my bulldozer here and this is a lego set a Lego Technic set um, that uses all the different parts that we've just talked about. So this little gear up here isn't being used as a gear, it's just being used as a handle for me to grip with my fingers. But it's running a worm gear that connects to another gear that then connects to these beams that are moving the shovel up and down. And this is the kind of functionality that we always see in Lego Technic sets. And it's what makes them so much fun. And this bulldozer also has a little axle at the back here which turns a gear that turns another gear that steers the bulldozer. And if I flip this little guy over, you'll see that uh, the axle turning on the top 
controls a gear hidden under here, which turns this gear, which then turns this gear here. And that's our bulldozer. So let's just bring in a few parts here and we'll just really quickly build something um, so I can give you a couple of ideas of how these pieces go together. So if I wanna build a quick teeter-totter, I might grab um, a couple of pins with friction and throw them into the bottom of this, which I can then connect to the bottom of this frame. And then if I grab a pin without friction and I throw it in here and find the center of this beam, that's not the center. That's not the center either. Uh, I now have a little teeter-totter or balancing rod. And if I wanted to control this with a gear, I could replace this regular pin with, let's say, a pin that has some friction on one end and an axle on the other. And then I might load a gear onto the back side of this. And then I could load another gear in underneath here. And you'll see everything is moving together. And then if I were to add yet another gear, um, and this time using a friction pin, if I add another gear here, you'll see that I've added friction to the whole system. So now, while there's still a little bit of wiggle and play, the system moves with friction and does not move freely. So I could now control this with my hand and operate a mechanism. And that's it. Everything else will follow in the next video.